Hello, and welcome to this special Thrive Today segment on how do the relational skills address my biggest problems. My name is Christy Harang. I'm part of the Thrive Today team. And today we are talking about how relational skills can help us build relational connection during the holidays. And Chris Corsi is joining us to give us some tips, some suggestions for this topic. So Chris, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Christy. I'm really excited about our time together today. This is going to be fun. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's fun. The holidays are upon us, at least at the time that we're yeah. recording this. Yeah. Um, I want to mention before I forget, we do have a special resource we are going to be sharing with you at the end of this short segment. Yes. Um, but Chris, you know, the holidays, they're supposed to be about relationship and connecting with the ones that we love. And yet, um, that doesn't always go so well. There can be challenges and uh, have you found this to be true in your experience with the holidays? Yeah, you know what? The holidays are kind of a mixed bag. And, you know, we think of the holidays as a special time. We're together with friends and family. We're, we're usually eating good food and doing fun things and enjoying ourselves. But you know what? Also, with, with all the good stuff, there's also a lot of pain. A lot of painful stuff can be associated with holidays. And so people kind of feel a little mixed about the holidays and many people feel dread actually mm -hmm. thinking about the holidays and being with family or friends. It just holidays can be a time of either reminding us of hard stuff or even just bringing out some of the dysfunction that might be there in our families and just some of those old familiar patterns uh, could be there and start to come up when we're with people. So I find it's often that mixed bag and, and that's why this is really um, important what we're doing today, because we're going to try to help people have some good solutions on how to navigate this terrain so that the good stuff grows, even in the midst of some of the hard dynamics that might be there. Perfect. Well, I know uh, I'm looking forward to talking about it because all the resources we can get to help make it the best, you know, the best time that it can be. It's just yep. really good. So it's let's start kind of on a lighter note, which is the reality that it's a busy time. I know that even if I'm getting along okay with the people and I have people in my life to connect with, sometimes, you know, shop, there's shopping and, you know, all these parties or events or things for my kids' school. It can just feel like there's not a whole lot of time to actually connect. Um, so what would you be some suggestions for connecting in midst of the busyness? Yeah, that's such a good question because, you know, it is a busy time and our plates are full and, and a lot of us, me included, we try to pack as many good things into the time and then, we, <laughs> then we're tired and we're maxed out and our battery just kind of gets depleted. So, yeah, you know, we can use this amazing right orbital prefrontal cortex and the right side of our brain that God's given us to really think through and plan and even come up with some goals and some solutions as we think through what it's going to be some of the challenges. What are those challenges that might be there when I spend time with my family? What's really important to me? There's a lot of good things, but it doesn't mean that I can do all of the good things. So maybe we need to prioritize and protect some time. What really helps our joy to grow is when we can quiet and we can rest. And so part of this is just what's going to help you find a rhythm between joy and connection and rest and quieting and maybe some recovery time and think through, yeah, you know, who are the people that when you look back at the holidays, you'll be glad that you spent the time with and even talk to Jesus about some of these things and just get some clarity, kind of come up with a plan that at least will help you walk some of this out. And it just helps you to predict um, some of the challenges you might run into and plan accordingly to really what your values are. Plan according to your values, what's important. And for me, Christy, very practically, I just have to like set it up for myself that I don't, I don't quickly agree to do all the things in the moment that when people invite me to something, I have to like check myself and say, oh, you know what? That sounds really fun. Let me think about this. Let me talk to Jen about it. I'll get back to you. Because in the, in the moment, it's a good thing. And my brain just like, oh, this will be fun. You know, let's do it. No, I have to like, hey, I'll get back to you. Giving ourselves a little bit of a buffer in, mm -hmm. in our plans might go a long way. That's really good. And I hear in that just being the word intentional comes to mind, just being That's intentional. Right. So I love the tips you gave about how we can process through 
looking ahead with intentionality about yeah. how we're going to spend our time. Right. Um, the resource we're giving is going to address this a little bit too, but I just, one of the thoughts that came to my mind is just taking advantage of the short moments um, and, you know, finding ways to connect even when we just have those short moments can also go yes. a long way. And That's we'll right. talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Yes. But let's talk about, you already hit on this uh, at the beginning that uh, we can have sometimes challenging dynamics within our family relationships. Um, sometimes there can be some friction, especially with everything that's been going on in our world the first few, last few years. Yeah. I feel like this is the heat has been turned up. Like if yes. there was relational conflict before, it's even more intense now yep, <laughs> than it, it was. So what are some ideas for being able to build connection when you're dealing with that? Yeah, that's such an important question. And and you know what, this is, uh, we probably can predict some some relationships or dynamics that might end up being tense or kind of awkward or painful and overwhelming. So as a good rule of thumb, this is where relational skills come into play. So as a good rule of thumb, we want to work really hard to stay relational, what we call skill zero. We want to stay out of enemy mode. We want to try to stay relational as we navigate these, these dynamics. And again, what can we predict that might be there and how do we want to respond? Um, this is where the, that orbital prefrontal cortex can allow us to simulate different things. So we can say, okay, if this happens, here's how I want to respond. And based on history, I can predict this will happen. Here's how I want to handle that this year. And we always talk to God about all these things to hold on to our peace. So I like to tell people, follow the peace and you know talk to Jesus about these things. Maybe there's some creativity that Jesus has that he might want to share with you as you go into these moments and as you stay relational, you get some, what we call God sight, just seeing some of what God sees. We also work on being compassionate, being compassionate, not just to your family or friends, but being compassionate to yourself. That sounds a little weird, I know, but we do need to be compassionate for ourselves and tender with our own struggles, our own limitations and weaknesses. So just be tender with yourself and what you know, what's going to be in your best interest as well as for those that you serve. So this adult maturity means I take care of me, but I also try to take care of people around me. And it's not one or the other. And, you know, Chrissy, that's a big one for family dynamics because, you know, many of us have these kind of unhelpful patterns where we feel like we have to take care of everybody at the cost of our well-being. So what do you need to take care of yourself as you navigate this? And don't try to be a messiah. And what that means is don't try to carry everybody's pain and problems to try to fix all the family dynamics that have been there for 30 some years or however long it's been. Just continue to talk to Jesus about these things. What does he see when he looks at these people that you might have a hard time with? What does he want you to know? How can you be praying for them proactively and yeah, just navigate it with wisdom and grace so that you're taking care of yourself while you're you're being tender and interacting with other people. And yeah, just, just follow what you need. And it's okay to take care of yourself. It's okay to do the things that help you. A little connection, lots of rest if there's some painful dynamics that might be there. That's really good. I, and I know like even sometimes with my family, I, for a long time, I felt guilty about going and being by myself. Cause it's like, we're together. Yeah. And we're, you know, especially like with extended family, we're supposed to yeah. be together. And it took me a while to realize it's okay to go in my room and just have some alone time and have some quieting yeah. time. So, you know, it's, it's taken me being willing to have God shift my perspective on what I expected of myself. That's uh, really good. These dynamics. Yeah. So with that, Chris, we know there are also people out there that either are alone during the holidays, maybe their family is away, maybe they don't have family, people that are dealing with loss where the seasons mm -hmm. trigger those emotions of feeling you know, like you had already talked about some pain in the midst of it. What are your recommendations um, for being able to find some connection when you're dealing with that? Yeah, this is also a really good area where we can predict that might some dynamics that might come up where, where we're struggling with loss or we're just not, you know, getting the connection or joy that we would like. And so what I tend to do um, is I try to even think about some of those people in my life that that I know are going to be alone. And may, maybe there's some ways that me as just a friend can include them in some of our holiday celebrations. But for those who are really struggling to 
yeah, like that maybe they don't have a lot of people that they can visit with when they're when they're in town or over the holidays. And this is where it helps to have some safe people that we can connect with and we can, you know, plan a video call and connect with regularly. And this is really where I'm excited about this resource that we're going to end up talking about. Because honestly, I think this resource is is going to be a very special tool and resource that people can use in the sense of we're trying to get some connection and find some safe people that we can proactively plan and say, hey, I know, I know that you know Christmas morning is going to be really hard. Would would we could we connect? Um, would could I do a video call with you and we can share some stories or we just coming up with a plan that really helps you be able to have some self-care for what you're going to need. And again, we're we're predicting, we're planning ahead so that in the moment we're not just frozen or like, I don't know what to do. This is just happening. We're just, we're trying to think through some of those scenarios, Christy, and mm -hmm. know how to take care of ourselves. And we always continue to talk to Jesus about some of these hurts. We, we can practice gratitude. We can reflect on appreciation. We can do lots of quieting. So finding ways to even maybe do some of those practices with, with safe people could really go a long way to anchor us in those times where we feel alone or disconnected. Wonderful. Well, thank you. I mean, so much more could be said. Mm -hmm. We're just scratching the surface on these topics, but we wanted to give you something practical that you could implement. And so we have, it's this uh, holiday connection, well, this connections holiday bingo board, yes. and there's two different sides to it. So we had mentioned busyness, um, you know, when you maybe feel like there's not a ton of time, or maybe we just run out of ideas because we're busy. Like, I don't know, I want to connect. I don't know how. And sometimes we just need some ideas to get our brain running and coming up with some, mm -hmm. some different thoughts. So this is uh, first pages for in-person connections. Um, this could be with friends, with family, different people that are in your life. And it just gives a variety of different ways you can connect with someone. You can get your relational circuits on. You can activate appreciation or quieting together with others. So these cover a variety of different uh, relational skills that we teach and train in. It covers um, just a variety of using our different senses and how we mm -hmm. can activate joy during the holiday seasons. Mm -hmm. And then on the back, we have creative connections. And this is specifically geared for those of us who don't have family with us during the holidays, or maybe we just really feel lonely. We just don't feel mm -hmm. like I have somebody to connect with. So it gives a variety of ways that you could connect with someone that isn't in person with you, connecting through Zoom or through a phone call or through sending notes, as well as ideas for how to connect with people, mm -hmm. um, maybe find people to connect with and get creative for how you can do that when you don't have mm -hmm. a lot of people in your life. So Chris, anything else you want to say about this, about how, it yeah. people, how to use it? You know what I really like about this resource, Christy, is it's so practical and just there's so much creativity woven throughout these exercises and these practices. So it really is a resource that I think is going to add a, a lot of wind into people's sails over this holiday season. So it just I can't wait to use this myself with my family and friends. It's, it's going to be really a good joy uh, charger right there, battery charger. Awesome. So we hope that you enjoy this. We're going to put the link to this PDF in the description of this video. Um, and, you know, pick whichever side is most relevant to you or use both sides and just see how many you can do. It can be fun to kind of cross them off, see how many you get through. And uh, we hope that you enjoy it. So Chris, thank you so much for being with yeah. us and just sharing these tips and ideas and anything else you want to say to our friends uh, as they head into the audience. Or yeah. The yeah, you know what? Just a very basic reminder, breathe deeply. What happens when we think about stress and holidays? Even when we pick up our phones, we hold our breath. So you know what? Very practical way to stay grounded is just remember to breathe deeply and, and just calmly and just keep, keep that oxygen going. That'll help you to stay a non-anxious presence as you navigate the, the holiday terrain. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris. This has been very helpful and we wish you all a wonderful Thanksgiving, a wonderful Christmas uh, from us at Thrive Today.